What is up? The Minnesota Twins had a very nice victory over the Cleveland Guardians tonight. In Cleveland, 2 to nothing. Bailey Ober pitched great. Uh, the bullpen backed him up on that shutout. And Max Kepler with a big home run. We're not going to talk more about that game in this video. Going to be more focused on the minor league side in this video. But you want to get something going in the chat, certainly uh, discuss tonight's game all about that. So uh, before tonight's game, though, uh, news came out. A lot of news in this transaction page here. Uh, Alex Kirilov recalled from AAA. Derek Rodriguez promoted to add some depth to the Twins bullpen. Trevor Larnick sent down. Uh, Caleb Thielbar to the IL. Uh, that doesn't feel good. Tyler Malley to the 60-day IL. That doesn't feel real good, though. You know, uh, when a starting pitcher gets shut down for four weeks, kind of reasonable to think he's going to need that amount of time to get ramped back up. But again, we're focusing on the minor league side and just sort of for a continuity. Uh, actually, I was going to talk today about uh, kind of wrapping up some thoughts from yesterday when I asked, you know, is it time to make a change? Is it time to shake things up? Um, and apparently the Twins say yes. Yes, it is. They have called up Alex Kirilov and sent down Trevor Larnick. Um, I was prepared to talk today about the kind of concept of guys being where they deserve to be and that the reality of the situation is Trevor Larnick and Alex Kirilov and a couple other guys I want to talk about, probably you could make the case all deserve to be in the major leagues, but there's just not that space. There's not that opportunity right now with the Twins. A lot of these guys do the same stuff. And the other two guys I want to mention, I was going to talk a lot about Alex, but he got called up. So, uh, But there are two guys I want to mention still in uh, Matt Walner and Edward Julian, who I feel like are guys that deserve to be um, at the major league level right now. Not that I feel like it's some kind of an injustice that they're in AAA or the Twins are making a mistake to keep these guys in AAA. It is a just focusing on this player alone and, and not looking at the team situation. I feel like those guys have um, every right to feel like they should be in the big leagues. And something that's kind of curious to me about Julian, and I, I don't, I, I want to make sure to throw out there that I don't think it's a big deal yet. Um, I think this was Julian's 10th game back in St. Paul after being sent down, but he has not played anywhere but second base still. Um, you know, He's not a great second baseman. Uh, he's probably never going to be a great second baseman, but I think you can get away with playing him there. Um, so really, the the only place you're going to potentially slide him down the de defensive spectrum is more than likely first base. Maybe they'll try him in, in, in the left field or something and see how that goes. They have done that in the past, and you know, you know, if usage is any indication, they clearly don't like that idea. Um, so, you know, I'm going to be looking for Julian to play some first base because as it stands right now, his only shot at playing time is either um, Polanco goes down, which, which is what opened the door from before, or Buxton is able to play center field and some DH opportunities open up. And, and both of those things seem l unlikely. There's a very narrow path for him to get onto the big league club right now. Um, so that's why I want to see him getting some first base reps up until now. You might have made the argument, well, Kirilov's been playing some first, and you know they've got some other guys they want to work in there. Uh, but now that Kirilov's been called up, uh, and again, it's been 10 days since Julian's been sent down, I, I want to see him playing some first base. Um, and, and why? I mean, why not get him some looks in other positions? Again, back when he, back, they they really worked him. Um, what was it, 2021? I think he played third base. He played second. He played first. He played corner outfield. Um, I didn't see a whole lot of that, but they must not have liked what they saw. We'll put it that way. And he's been exclusively a second baseman since then. But again, Polanco is there, and he's he ain't going anywhere as long as he's healthy. Would like to see him playing some other positions. That's what's really keeping Julian from his opportunity. Matt Walner, we're not going to get too deep into this, but I did want to throw this out there. I thought this was a really interesting fun fact that I threw out there. Uh, this was when everybody was so up in arms about Kirilov not being promoted and how kind of unjust that was. And I just want to throw out there, like, Matt Walner, uh, and these guys are are not, they're, they're very similar in age. I think they're, like, they're less than two months age difference, I want to say, between Kirilov and Walner. A uh, big difference is that Kirilov was drafted out of high school, Walner was drafted out of college. 
Um, so that's why if it might feel like one guy's been a- around a lot longer, you're right. Um, but pretty darn similar in terms of production. Just just looking at on base percentage and slugging percentage. Uh, if you want to say anybody deserves a, a, a chance at the major league level, I think you also have to acknowledge that probably Matt Walner is kind of in line for an extended look at the major league level at some time. Now, you know, again, and that's just looking at him in a vacuum and not looking at the team situation. Once we zoom out and kind of look at the reality of the team situation, it was hard enough for Kirilov to get his uh, opportunity. So. Uh, Matt Walner's probably going to be waiting for a lot while, but I did want to throw that out and kind of touch on that. And I think kind of the point I'm trying to make is that anybody who's at the major league level, like Trevor Larnick, and has had a bit of a, he, he you know, it's not like he's had a huge sample. I think he's a clip 600 plate appearances, and he hasn't really truly shown what he can do yet. Uh, We've seen flashes and we've seen good things out of him. I don't want to say that he's a lost cause, but it's totally understandable at this point that that the Twins have multiple guys, multiple guys waiting in the wings who have done enough to check the boxes at the minor league level to say, yeah, they probably deserve a look. And when you have a guy at the major league level that is scuffling as much as Larnick was, um, why not make a change? Why not make a change? It's not a death sentence for Larnick either. Um, you know, injuries will more, more than likely open the door for him to get back up or he'll play well and, and maybe somebody else will fade and it'll I'll open an opportunity for him. Um, so, you know, I, I support that idea. It's not necessarily even, even anything to do with Kirilov to me because, again, I think there's a pretty legit argument that maybe they should have called Walner up if we if we're really breaking it down but I do think Kirilov was in front of him sort of in the pecking order um so anyway enough of me blabbing on let's take a look at some highlights we're going to start with Julian and then go into I think we've got Balazovic and Brooks Lee so let's get into that so circling back to Edward Julian here on Thursday he hits a home run for the Saints a home run he pulls out this guy just has lightning hands this was a 3-1 count, and it seemed like he hunted this pitch, which is something that I think that's a skill he's going to need to develop a little bit more, and it's encouraging to see him do that and try to seek out a pitch to punish instead of more looking for a walk. Now, on base percentage, that, that's just a box he's checked, so I'm not concerned about that. I know he can draw walks. Um, Jordan Balazovic, that's another guy I want to talk about. I want to point this out that he topped out at 96.6. This is according to the official you know, TrackMan Hawkeye data, whatever it is they have on Baseball Savant. The actual tracking, because you'll see some 99s. Uh, so this is confirmation that, yes, the Saints stadium radar gun is a bit hot, which we've suspected all along. Uh, but still, you know, Balzavik running up there at 96.6. Made his first start of the year. Obviously a short start since he's coming off of pitching out of the bullpen, pitching in short bursts. Uh, but three and a third innings, one run, three walks, six strikeouts. He only faced 13 batters and struck out six of them. There you saw that great curveball, which is an awesome 0-2 pitch for him. And here's a three-pitch strikeout uh, that he had. 15 whiffs, 15 swinging strikes, and only three and a third inning from Jordan Balazovic. Not really prepared to say that like he's back in all caps, uh, but he is certainly back on the radar, much more interested in him than I was to open the year. And we're going to look at some Brooks Lee. Apologize to this Northwest Arkansas feed for some reason early in their game. I don't know if they have like a big fireworks show or something. Very blurry. But here you see Lee, a Babbitt merchant. Absolutely. This is a guy who um, puts the ball in play a lot, hits a lot, a lot of line drives. But maybe has some Babbitt magic as well. But, of course, when you're hitting the ball well, when you're hitting line drives, that's kind of you're going to have that happen. We know that from another guy. Don't even want to say his name. Don't want to, don't want to throw comps out there. But we saw another guy on the Twins uh, spraying line drives all over the field uh, in recent years. But I also want to give you some highlights of Lee in the field because that's a big question. And I think this guy lacks some range, lacks, lacks some of the pure athleticism of a lot of major league shortstops. But he has, he's, it's not that he's not athletic. He makes a lot of plays. He throws well on the run. He throws awkwardly well. He fields awkwardly well. Um, so I, I, think, I hesitate to say he's not athletic. There you see him committing an error there. Um, I just don't think he quite has the same range as a lot. I think he might, might play shortstop at the big league level. Maybe not for long, but I think he could be a gold glove 
third baseman potentially. And here we see an inning-ending double play where he shows some arm off a little bit there. Um, that was a big play, him and Prado turning that double play. He committed that error to extend that inning, but they finish it off with a double play. Again, that's Brooks Lee. Thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, thank you to all the members here, the premium members. We will talk again soon.